The tallest building in the world right now is the Burj Khalifa, an incredibly impressive structure. But as an engineer studying fire safety, when I look at a building like this, all I can think about is if it caught on fire, how am I ever going to get out? You're on the top floor, 828 meters, 162 stories above the ground. How fast can you get out? And we also need to think about what if there's fire obstructions in the way? What about the elderly, the disabled? All of this evacuation takes time. There's a term you've probably heard before called fire rating. It defines how long a material is able to resist exposure to fire. And right now, we apply fire rated materials to buildings in order to protect them and to allow for an evacuation to occur. As an example, inside this decorative column here is a structural column with a thin fire rated coating of probably 15 minutes or so. Such that if there was a fire in this room right now, that fire rated coating would protect the structural element, giving us all the opportunity to evacuate. Beyond that 15 minute period, however, that coating is going to deteriorate and the structural element is going to be directly susceptible to the fire, typically resulting in major collapses. Now, there's no doubt that this type of fire rating protection technique has been successful over the past decades, but there's an obvious limitation to providing only a narrow window for evacuation. Just this September of 2018, for instance, there was a fire at the National Museum of Brazil. Everyone got out during the fire rated period, but the ongoing fire and subsequent collapse destroyed 92% of the museum's collection. It couldn't be evacuated in time. This is why our research team at Western is looking at fire safety from a different perspective. Rather than protecting structures, we want to design structures to withstand fire events. The column here is designed for all of the loads above. People walking, furniture, snow on the roof. Why not design it for fire just like every other load? To do this, we've been looking at how fire degrades concrete structures in particular. And by evaluating the thermal stresses that develop, we're able to quantify the degradation and quantify the forces that arise during a fire event. The end result that we're now nearing is a series of simplified models that allow us to design concrete structures for fire events without the need for protective fire rating measures. Using these tools, we'll be able to avoid the disasters we see year after year. And ultimately, if we're not worried about a collapse, the question, how fast can you evacuate a building fire, becomes one of far lesser importance. Get to a well-ventilated area and wait it out. Hopefully, this will save lives. Thank you.